Psalm chapter 2, verse 1 to 6. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. You see, we are different and we are peculiar. The history of mankind has been shaped by crises. Some of these crises are spiritual, mental, and physical. But the history of God's church has also been shaped by crises. If you want to know the true quality of a gold, or the true quality of diamond, or a precious stone, it has to go through fire. There's nothing that's taking place on this planet that has never been before. Because the Bible tells me in the book of Ecclesiastes that there's nothing new underneath the sun. The things you've seen were the things that happened before. If you're a good Bible student, go through the history of the Bible. This is nothing new. But in all this, God's church has continued to advance. So, the plague or the crisis or sickness that comes or the betrayal of a friend is nothing new. What surprises me is the attitude of believers. You can't make the abnormal normal and normalize the abnormal. What is normal to the world is abnormal to God. That's why God gave us this planet. He gave us a ministry of reconciliation and he he made us kings and priests. Whatever that's taking place on this planet cannot be determined by demons, can't be determined by crisis, and we can't play the victim and say, we're victims. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. That's not who we are. Every breath God has put in your body is a breath that spits fire. Your existence should be a threat to demons and principalities and powers. Not their existence, because we know the end. We know how they're going to end their lives. We know that victory is certain, and nothing can change it. But we can continue to play the victim. You say there is a virus out there. Even when the government tells you you can start your business, you say, I don't want to go. Because I'm afraid. Where is your God? Let me tell you something. Death is everywhere. There is this story of a guy who said, there is death outside. So I don't want to go anywhere. Because there is a prophecy that I'm going to die. So he spent his entire life staying at home. Because he didn't want to die. And guess what? One day there was an accident. And the truck drove straight into his fence, smashed his fence, entered his house, entered his living room, and killed him inside. Safety is not in the confines of your home. Safety is not in the confines of your fears. Safety belongs to God. Because the Bible tells me that those who trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. They shall not be shaken. If you're a believer, someone close to you or someone that you know something bad happens to that person and you're shaking, then you are not fit to be one of us. We are like eagles. Look at the Republic of the Philippines. The churches are closing. And you say it's normal. It is not normal. In the place I came from, people are expanding. They're having crusades all over the place. Hundreds of thousands have been set free. Then you sit down and you tell yourself, I'm tweeting on Facebook. Revival is taking place. Stop deceiving yourself. 
The Bible didn't say just preach the gospel. The Bible makes it clear in the book of Matthew 28. Go to all nations of the world and make disciples. To make a disciple is much more bigger than just going on Facebook Live. It means impartation. It means visitation. It means challenging them. It means allowing them grow from glory to glory. My nation is set free. I can sit back and tell you that in the thousand years to come, Christianity, if Jesus tarries, Christianity is going to thrive in my hometown and thrive in my place. In the place I came from, the locality I came from, 99.99% of the people are Christians. In the family I came from, more than 100 of us were pastors. Don't allow this present darkness to overcome you. Fight the darkness. Tell your neighbor, say fight. fight. You've been silent for too long. Yes. Fight. fight. It's a fight of faith. Amen. The other day, the devil came to my room. He said, Bishop Tony, one day you're going to die. I said, yes, I'm going to die. But I'm going to plant the seed of revival that even when I'm dead, everywhere you see, you see the seed of revival that are planted and these seeds will consume your kingdom and stop you. Tell two, three people, say fight. You can't sit down and accept defeat because this is not who we are. There's nothing in my DNA that tells me that I'm going to be defeated. There's nothing in your DNA that tells you that you're going to be defeated. There's nothing that tells me that your family is going to be destroyed. The Bible tells me that those who know that God shall be strong. And they shall do great exploits. I want to see the revival fire in the Republic of the Philippines. I want to see men and women standing up for what is right, what is godly. I want to see them taking up the mantle of leadership. Leadership is not just sitting down and doing things that are inconsequential. Leadership is building up faith. For the next generation. From ancient times until now, the kingdom of God has forcefully advanced despite the fury of hell. The patriarchs of the faith endured persecution with some pain with their lives. If the tyranny of Emperor Nero, the violence of King Herod, and the wickedness of communist dictators could not silence the gospel, then no power on earth can stop us. The Bible tells me in the book of Psalm 33, verse 10, the Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the people of no effect. Every gathering against your destiny, every ungodly alliance against your purpose, I declare that it shall come to naught in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible tells me in the book of Psalm 21, verse 11, for the intended evil against you, they devised a plot which they are unable to perform. Do you know why? Because you carry the spirit of God. And the spirit you carry is a spirit that cannot be defeated. The spirit you carry is a spirit that cannot be silenced. The spirit you carry is a spirit that is anti-virus. The spirit you carry is a spirit that is anti-cancer. Fight the good fight of faith. <laughs> Nahum 1.9 tells me, what do you conspire against the Lord? He will make an utter end of it. Affliction will not rise up a second time. I don't know how much affliction you have seen in your home. I stand on the supremacy of the word of God that the affliction of betrayer will not come to you a second time in the name of Jesus. The affliction of poverty will be far from your home. The affliction of sickness will be far from your home. The affliction of depression will be far from your home. Every conspiracy against your destiny shall be put to an end in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them plan against you. It will not stand. Let them rise up against you it will not stand if God be for you who can be against us the Bible tells me in the book of Job chapter 5 verse 11 to 13 he sets on high those who are lowly do we have lowly people in this place your case is not hopeless because my God is going to set you high the Bible tells me that God will take up nobody's 
take them from the prisons and set them high. And they will sit among nobles and kings. I prophesy that my God will lift you up from your lowliness and take you to greater heights in the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy that every opposition against your destiny, every enchantment against you, every incantation, every spell, every enchantment has been put to an end in the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy that if God rises for you, if God fights for you, who will be against you? The Bible tells me in the book of Exodus 14 verse 14 that my God will fight for you. Peace be still. Stand still and you will see the salvation of God in your home. Stand still and you will see the salvation of God in your business. Stand still and you will see a turnaround. He sets on high those who are lowly and those who mourn are lifted to safety. He frustrates the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot carry out their plans. He catches the wise in their own craftiness and the counsel of the cunning comes quickly upon them. Everyone who has cheated you, I prophesy that this year, the Bible tells me that if the thief has been caught, he's going to pay you back that which is stole from you sevenfold. Everyone that has planned against your destiny, against your economic interest, against your business, I declare that my God will cause them to pay you back what they stole from you sevenfold. Receive sevenfold restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. It's coming upon you from the north, east, west, and south. Everything the devil stole from you, you are receiving it back sevenfold. If you believe that shout hallelujah what do you think the church of God is a social organization maybe that's what your mind tells you it's much more than an organization a gathering of people much more than that a gathering of the anointed a gathering of people who carry fire who carry light who cannot be stopped. A gathering of people whose only language is faith. A gathering of people who have plans, but alternative A is faith. Alternative B, faith. C, faith, faith, faith. Faith determines our destiny. A gathering of people purchased and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. A gathering of an untouchable people. A people who know their God. And that's the gathering where you belong. And the Bible tells me in the book of Matthew 16, 18, I'll build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. God's going to build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God's going to build his church and the gates of wickedness shall not prevail against it. God's going to build his church and the gates of death shall not prevail against it. God's going to build his church and the gates of atrocities shall not prevail against it. Guess what? You are a member of the body of Christ. That means sickness will not prevail against you. Hopelessness will not prevail against you. Darkness will not prevail against you. You will arise and shine because God says so. The Bible tells me, weeping may endure through the night, but joy comes in the morning. On this seventh day, on this day of March, I came to prophesy that joy is coming to your life. Joy is coming to your home. Joy is coming to your body. Joy is coming into your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Every imagination, every enchantment, everything that exalts itself, against the knowledge of the word of God I declare that victory is coming in the mighty name of Jesus like David I can say I was young but now I'm old I've never seen the righteous forsaken neither have I seen a seed back for bread I came with the word of God like fire in my bones let the weak rise up to battle because I hear in the spirit realm there is a sound and I see the sound I hear the sound it is distinct I hear the sound of a abundance of rain I hear the sound of abundance of rain I hear the sound of abundance of rain let righteousness flow like an ever flowing stream let the rain of righteousness never depart from your home let the rain of God's blessings never depart from your home let the rain of God's protection never depart from your home I hear the sound and it is a clear distinct sound of victory that very soon we are coming out we are coming out of depression, coming out of darkness, 
coming out of defeat, coming out of shame, coming out of everything that is ungodly. I hear the sound of glory because my God and your God is going to take us from glory to glory, from power to power, from strength to strength. The Bible tells me that the steps of the righteous shines brighter and brighter onto a perfect day that your today is going to be better than your tomorrow. Your next tomorrow is going to be better. I see victory coming. Give him some high praise. Adversity is a fuel that drives believers and the church to the realm of power, purpose, and prosperity through the spirit of purity. The Bible tells me in the book of Psalm 129 verse 2, many a time, <laughs> you want to be a champion that you must have the special capacity to withstand the many crises that will come. David didn't say a few times. He said, many a time they have afflicted me from my youth. Why do you behave as if this thing that you're going through is some strange thing? It's happening to believers all over the world. I don't know about your Christian path, but mine has not been made. I have not passed through the path of lollipops. I've passed through fire. And by fire, I'm preserved. By fire, I'm standing. By fire, I'm speaking to you. I know my God. One thing I can tell you, even if you pass through the fire, the fire is not going to consume you. Even when you pass through the storms, the storms will drown you. Even when you pass through turbulence, you will be still. Because my God fights for you. Because the Bible tells me that, nay, I will never leave nor forsake you. said many a time they have afflicted me from my youth yet they have not prevailed against me there's no way in the bible that tells me that god is going to take away the power of the enemy he said but behold nay i give you power said power over all the power of the enemy you shall tread upon snakes and scorpions and nothing say nothing whatever that can defeat a believer has never been fashioned and can never be fashioned. Because in God's plan, the devil can have some small powers. But what you carry is much more greater than the power of the devil. The Bible tells me, greater is he that lives in you. For you to stop me, you need to pass through God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells me that a threefold cord cannot easily be broken. God has never been defeated. He was not defeated yesterday. He was not defeated today. And he can't be defeated tomorrow. If God is fighting for you, no one can stop you. If God is leading you, no one can stop you. If God is for you, no one can stop you. Tell your neighbor, say rejoice. First Peter 1.7 that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Do you know why your faith is tested? So that you can be purified. So that God can take you to the place of honor. Take you to the place of praise, honor, and glory. You're going through what you're going through because God wants you to go to the place of praise. The place of praise takes you to the place, to the realm of honor. And the realm of honor takes you to a bigger realm of glory. I declare that glory is coming upon your life. Glory is coming upon your home. Glory is coming upon your destiny. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Thank God for witches. Because they show how powerful God is. Thank God for sorcerers. Because without the sorcerers of Egypt, Moses wouldn't have known how powerful the rod God gave to him was. Thank God for all the bad things. Because it shows how powerful we are. Isaiah 44 verse 25. Who frustrates the signs of the babblers? 
and drives diviners mad. Who turns wise men backward and makes the knowledge foolishness? My God is going to frustrate the plans of the wicked concerning your life. My God is going to frustrate the plans of diviners concerning your life. Even if they come against you in one way, my God says they will flee in seven different ways. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. 